Ray Moore! Thank you. And you niggas better laugh too. I'm gonna tell some jokes this evening. I don't wanna hear a fucking one of you say, I heard that before. If you heard it, laugh at it anyway. This lady caught her husband out in the barn fucking a cow. She looked at him and said, why you simple, ignorant, stupid motherfucker. Said, I'm going to get dressed and go to church and I'm going to tell everybody that you was fucking that cow. He said, yes, and if you do, I'll tell them which one of you got the best pussy too. This young man had a dog. This dog was named Fido. And old Fido could come in the house, bring the paper in and damn near read it. And his friend was sitting there talking. He said, man, that show is a smart dog you got. He said, man, you ain't seen nothing yet. He said, this dog can go to the store and get our dinner and bring it back to us. <laughs> he gave the dog a hundred dollar bill and said, Fido, go down to the store and get our dinner and bring it back. Fido went down to the store and stayed one hour. Man looked out, didn't see him. Two hours, he didn't see him. Three hours, he didn't see him. He finally walked outside in the back and saw Fido out there dancing with a girl dog. He said, Fido, said, you ain't never done this before. He said, you ain't never give me the money either. This young man was getting married. He had him nice girl, baby. Oh, she was voluptuous and good looking. And she wasn't gonna let him fuck her until he got married to her. Said, baby, said, I just got to, I just got to. Said, baby, just let me feel it. Said, no, I ain't gonna let you do nothing to it until we are married. He said, baby, I got to, said, just let me smell it. Oh, please, oh, please. She said, baby, said, you don't have to wait but until Monday and you can get it. He said, baby, said, but I just got to smell it. She said, all right, I'm going to let you smell it one time. He got down there and said, said, are, are you, you sure this will keep till Monday? <laughs> and, yes, yeah, man put an ad in the paper. You know, he had the biggest dick in the world, baby. His, his dick hung down to his knee. And he never could get a woman that could take this dick. So he put an ad in the paper and said, I'm going to give any woman $10,000 who can take this dick. <laughs> These women start falling in answering the ad. The first girl took two inches of it and fainted. <laughs> Next girl took three inches and fell out and died. <laughs> Finally, an old lady come to the door and knocked on the door. He said, old lady, what the hell are you doing here? She said, I answered the ad, didn't I? <laughs> He said, old lady, you know you can't take this dick. She said, well, Sonny, I'll tell you what I want you to do. He said, if you give me half of it and get it in and start working, and then later on give me the other half, I can take it all. He said, oh, no, I'm not going to give that old woman no $10,000. I'm going to ram it all in at one time. He got in the bed and started fucking, and he said, mm, I'm going to get in bed to ram it in. And he said, Boom! She said, oh, 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 now, Sonny, give me the other half. <laughs> this sissy come to town, you know, and wanted to find the man. When she got on the corner, there was nobody on the street but one man. This sissy looked at him and said, honey, the world hold me in at today. Said, I'm looking for me a man today, honey. He said, where's everybody at? He said, everybody is up on the hill at that big oak tree hanging a sissy. He said, oh, really? <laughs> this lady's husband died, you know, but he was in an accident and all his face had got blew off. So they sent him to the mark. So she went there to identify him. She couldn't identify him because he didn't have no face. She said, well, I'll tell you one thing. Said, if you pull out the bottom part and I look at it, baby, I know my husband when I see it. They pulled out the drawers and she looked at one man and said, oh, no, honey, that's not him. I know that ain't him. He had more than that to work with. 
Pulled out another drawer. She said, oh, no, that's not him either. Pulled out another drawer and she looked down and said, whoa, wow. Said, that's not him, but somebody has lost a dear friend. <laughs> you know, I had this young lady out with me the other night. And she, I looked at her, I said, darling, I said, oh, I just wants to get over with you tonight. She says, honey, says, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to act like no hoe tonight. Says, but if you buy me some shoes, I'm going to fuck you till you're generally satisfied. I got in the bed with her and I rode that pussy from amazing grace to floating opportunity. <laughs> I got up out the bed and started dressing, getting ready to walk out the door. She said, well... Where is the money for my shoe? I said, the bitch, good as you can fuck barefooted, you don't need no motherfucking shoe. <laughs> These two soldiers had fought all the way to the wall. They went to Vietnam, you know, and they come back home to Nacogdoches, Mississippi. And the people down there said, we give you two soldiers anything you want, a white soldier and a black soldier. They looked at the white soldier and said, young man, what do you want? He said, well, I'll tell you what I want. I want me a Lincoln Continental and five thousand dollars. They asked the brother, said, well, brother, what do you want? He said, I want me a dollar and a half from the head of my dick down to my nuts. They looked at the brother and said, brother, don't you want no more than that? He said, no, that's all I want. He laid out that old big long dick and they put one dollar and a half at the head of it, put another dollar and a half on it, another dollar and a half, another dollar and a half, another dollar and a half, another dollar and a half. And one fella looked at him and said, nigga, where's your nuts at? He said, in Vietnam. This lady was walking down the street the other day, these two white ladies, you know, and this lady looked at the other and said, honey, I tell you the truth, I just can't see what our young, pure white girls see on those nigger boys. <laughs> the other one said, honey, I know what they see, those niggers have some big dicks. <laughs> She says, oh, honey, how do you know? She said, let me tell you, I don't want you to tell no one, but I tried me a nigger the other day. I called up and I said, send me a real nigger out here. Honey, and I got into bed with that nigger. He had a zebra loaf hung down to his knee. <laughs> honey, that nigger stuck so much dick in my pussy, it made my asshole twinkle. Speaking of motion pictures, you know they got the Tower and Inferno out, and they got Earthquake out. Now I hear that they're going to play both of these pictures on the same bill together, and they're going to call it Shake and Bake. Now you know niggas are still acting a damn fool over tipping. They go back down to Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi in them old grease pot restaurants where they used to not lie us in the back door. And we go in there and sit down and have a meal. And when we get through with our meal, we put a dollar or two dollars on the table. <laughs> Brothers, that, we ain't nothing but damn fools. When some of them old waitresses come out there look like the head waitress of the Last Supper, they look like wrinkle factories and you give them all your money, you should be giving them a dime and walking out the door. When you walk out, they're going to call you a motherfucker anyway, so you might as well be a cheap motherfucker. That's a At this time, brothers and sisters, your ex-president, just before he resigned. <laughs> My fellow Americans and not you fucking niggers and 
goddamn chili chokers and poor white trash. I hate all of you. I come to you this evening with deep regret that I have to leave the White House. But I will not come back to Washington to testify for my cabinet because those motherfuckers run their mouths like the clatterbone of a goose's ass. <laughs> In fact about it, I hope they hang the cocksucker. <laughs> now I'd like to say one thing. It was the niggers and poor hunkies that said I was trying to be a dictator. And they are right. I did a lot of dicking and you sons of a bitch sure did the taking. <laughs> I'd like to make this perfectly clear but to Mr. Ford. I'm going to do something for you that your daddy never done. I'm going to make you the president. But I want a full and complete part. And I don't want no shit. Now people are saying that I took money from questionable sources. But I never questioned the source, I merely took the money. People are saying that I'm going to die. But I'm not going to die. I'm going to live to spend the money that I took. Yes, I took, I took, I took, I took, yes, I took a plenty. So that's why I'm taking my tied, sick, phlebitis ass on back to San Clemente. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, I told you that you should have voted for me, Dolomite. A hustler in the White House. Yeah. When I told you to vote for me, I was telling you because there's a lot of people been out here trying to run for president. Bozo is running. And I looked at Bozo the other day, I said, Bozo, why in the hell are you out here running for president? He said, Dolomite, you had one clown in the White House, you might as well give another one a break. <laughs> and Daisy, the cow, can you imagine a cow running for president? She says, well, Nixon done milk the country dry. You might as well milk me a while. <laughs> People are asking me different questions about what I would do for them if I would become their president. Question, please. Mr. Dolomite. Yes, sir. If you become president, what would you do about the unemployment today? Unemployment, I would open up steel and fuck a job. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dolomite. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know what do you think about sex on TV? Sex on TV is fine as long as the set is turned off. <laughs> Now, young man, you, you look like good army material. When I get to be president, I'm going to put your ass in the army. You don't matter, I can't go in the army. Why? Because one leg is shorter than the other. Don't worry about it. Where you going, the ground ain't level, no way. Dolomite. Yes, sir. What are you going to do about all these pussy eaters today? Well, I'm going to legalize eating pussy, baby. You ate your way out of one, so you might as well eat your way back in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the queen of the party records, Miss Lady Reed. Now we're going to get into our thing right now. 
I make a motion. You know they say about cold pussies. They don't talk about cold dicks. I make a motion that all cold dicks should be cut off, wrapped in saran wrap, and put in the deep freezer. And forget about that. Third motion. All right. I make a motion that men with small Paula Peters should do Peter exercises. I make a motion all them Quaker oatmeal motherfuckers, that's them three minute fuckers, <laughs> be made to go stand in the corner and jerk off so they learn how to hold it a little taste longer. And the second that motion, I make a motion that a man should pay off, shoot off, and get the motherfucker off. All right. <laughs> All right, now, sisters, listen at me. I make a motion that a man should suck a little more than just plain titty. I feel if a man is caught eating outside, you know, them motherfuckers stick six babies at home and eat up some pussy in the street. I feel like if a man get caught eating pussy in the street, drag him on, cut out his tongue, Put in an alcohol jar and sit on a dresser to remind him he should have ate home first. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet and greet the king of the party record and the star of the motion picture. Dolomite, how about it? Hey. You niggas better laugh too. If you don't, I wish hemorrhoids up on you. I ain't Yes. You know, I like to go to these motels and things. I, you know, I'm a freak for motels. And when I arrived at the motel the other day and went in my room, there was a man in there hollering, said, oh, baby, you got such voluptuous lips. Says, when I get to Manchester, I'm going to have them molded in clay. He went down just a little bit further and started playing with her tits. Says, oh, those beautiful nipples, I'm going to have them molded in clay. I want to hear more. He went down a little bit further. I sure want to hear what he's going to do with that. He said, baby, that's so pretty, I think I want to have that molded in clay. And about that time, I knocked on the door. He said, yeah, who is it? I said, the molder from Manchester. <laughs> now, you know, speaking of hotels, I went to a hotel the other day with a friend of mine. We had rooms, you know, and he had a chick in one room and I had one in another room. So we bought a bottle of scotch So. You know, I thought I'd take him over a drink of the scotch. He didn't answer. I just walked on in. He was knee deep in some pussy, baby. He had his nose in it. This motherfucker looked like a glazed donut about the mouth. He looked at, he looked at me and said, man, why did you come in the door without knocking? I thought I would bring you over a drink of scotch. He said, why, you ignorant motherfucker, can't you see that I'm so drunk now, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> no one knows where the nose goes when the doze is closed, remember that. I ain't lying. Yes, indeedy. I got a lot of more good shit to tell you. Now, as you know, the expresses, you saw the motion picture, the expresses, I'm sure. Well, black people would not deal with it like that. The reason I say that, because my grandmother have a little niece. She's about 12 years old. She thought she would try that shit. <laughs> Those white people had a rug, you know, and pistol soak up on the rug, you know. But my grandmother have a linoleum and my little 12-year-old niece pissed all over that linoleum and it run all down the floor. My grandmother said, bitch, get a mop and mop that shit up. And said, all that green shit you're spitting out of your mouth, you must have been giving the jolly green giant some head. I 
I'd like to ask a couple of ladies some questions. I know you know, ma'am, how you cook chitlins. You know how to cook chitlins? Well, let me give you my remedy of cooking them. Put them in a pot and boil the shit out of them. Don't, Don't give me give the, the claps, claps. Give them to some other motherfucker. <laughs> That's some good shit, I'm telling you. You know, I had a brother, he was so dumb, he thought Kotex was mattress for mice. <laughs> he was so fucking dumb, he thought VAT69 was the Pope's phone number. <laughs> he was so stupid, he thought manual labor was the Mexican. He was so dumb, he turned out a blowjob because he thought he would lose his unemployment check. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Nigga, please. <laughs> yeah, you, you a type of motherfucker that always interrupt. <laughs> I can smell a rat and the wind is coming from your direction. <laughs> Hey! Shut up. Shut up! That's what I say about a nigga. I always want to get in the show. <laughs> Let me tell you about him. Now, that's the kind of nigga that, that will fart in a, in a bathtub, bathtub and turn around and bite, bite the bubble. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a brand new find on the Dolomite Review, Miss Linda Broadcuff. That's here. All right. That was a man that had a wife. Every day he come home from work, she had a complaint. He wanted some pussy. So, first day he asked her, he says, oh, baby, can I have a little bit today? She says, no, I have female trouble. But next day he come home, he wanted some. She says, my back is hurt. So the next day that he came home, he had six little kittens laying in the bed for her. And she looked over there and seen him, and she said, what is this motherfucking shit? She said, that was a six paw girls for your dead pussy. Say, 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 you big bird, mother. You big enough to be playing football with the Rams, yeah. Yes, ramming my foot up your motherfucking ass. <laughs> Let's hear it for Linda Broadclaw. I ain't lying. And Linda, I'd like to say one thing. He's one ugly motherfucker, too, ain't he? He's ugly enough to scare the wrinkles out of a mule's ass. That motherfucker's ugly enough to break daylight with his fist. In fact about it, he opened up the doors one morning and daylight refused to come in. Now when you say ugly, niggas ugly, he ain't, niggas ain't the only ugly people, baby. They got some ugly hunkies. And that is one ugly hunky there. He's just so ugly, he look like crime in the face. You know, I like to go to motels and things. And when I went to the motel the other day, let me tell you what happened. Listen, this young man and young lady come to the motel and they wanted to get some rest. So he said, baby, you lay down. I'm going and wash the car. Sure enough, she laid down and all at once a train come through and knocked out the bed. She called up the manager, said, manager, a train just shook me out of the bed. He said, lady, you got to be mistaken. I've been here 10 years and ain't nothing ever happened like that. Said, well, you come up here and try it and see for yourself. He come up there, she said, well, you're going to have to get in the bed. He got in the bed with her and about that time her husband come in. He said, man, what the hell are you doing laying up here in this bed with my wife? He said, could you believe that I'm waiting for a train? <laughs> hey, Lord. Did you hear the one about Linda Lovelace and Yule Givens was supposed to get married? The judge refused to give him a license. Why? He said, between you two motherfuckers, y'all eat up the whole damn world. I ain't lying. That's some good shit I'm telling you. 
Line. Brothers and sisters, tonight I have been yours truly. Rudy Ray Moore, better known as Dolomite from the motion picture Dolomite. I want to thank you for letting me be myself. Thank you. Dolomite is my name. And rapping and tapping, that's my game. I'm young and free and just as bad as I want to be. This is the hour of power. So I'm glad to see your face in the place. I want you to put a little more zip in your hip. And a little more soul in your stroll. And a little more slide in your glide. Play it cool and don't be no fool. Look at me. I'm a rare specimen of man, don't you agree? The stars, the sun, the moon refuse to shine without first consulting me. Every night I sign my own autograph book and never pass a mirror without taking a second look. I back up the moon and push back time. Took the duty out of the fruit and had the devil drink and wine. I took the day and brought back yesterday. Took the 4th of July and put it in June. And made leap year jump over the moon. I had the elephants roosting in trees. And all the ants wearing BVDs. Mules has kicked me and didn't bruise my heart. Rattlesnakes have bit me and crawled off and died. I swam the Pacific and didn't get wet. Walked through hell and didn't even sweat. I'm the one that killed Monday and whooped Tuesday and put Wednesday in the hospital. Called up Thursday to tell Friday not to burn Saturday on Sunday. There is no other like this soul brother. Cool and deaf and know how to rap. Yes, my rap is on time and it rhymes. And if you don't think it's fine, check out your mind. Live the life that you love. And love the life that you live. Whoever you are and wherever you may be. From the frantic Atlantic to the terrific Pacific. Be the best of whatever you are. Reach out for the moon. But if you miss it, cling to a star. Take care of yourself. And try to do something good for someone else. Because you my nigga. If you don't get no bigger. If you get bigger, you my bigger nigga. I'd like to say one more thing to you. You my hunky. As long as you don't turn out to be no junkie. <laughs> Darling, you know that I love you. But you walked away and left me sitting all alone in my lonely room one Friday night. So I got up and went out and Thought I found somebody that could take your place, but you got jumped. Now you didn't come back and started chasing me. I just want to let you know that I, yes, I still love you. So listen, I chased you all over town. You gone and turned around And now you started chasing me Why don't you let me be Easy, 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 baby Take it easy for a little while Easy, 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 baby Slow and easy is my style 
Well, I don't know what to do I tried to keep from loving you Darling, you are such a treat I love you cause you're sweet Easy, 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 baby Take it easy for a little while Slow and easy is my style Stop. 